Hello. Welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with PATH Presenter and uh, the Digital Pathology Association, the DPA. Our, our case today brings up some interesting uh, dilemmas in uh, surgical pathology. Uh, again, it's drawn from the realm of GYN pathology, which as you know, I enjoy, uh, but it's a fairly young woman, uh, 34 years old, and she is uh, about a decade post renal transplant. Uh, it's unclear the cause that precipitated that renal transplant, uh, but she now has a large uterine mass <clears throat> which is impinging itself on the uh, transplanted kidney in the uh, um, suprapelvic brim, uh, creating some vaginal retention. And she's also noted some vaginal bleeding. Uh, so it's felt that uh, a uh, resection is going to be uh, pertinent. But this raises, I think, an interesting uh, set of questions, first off, uh, and that is how does immunosuppression impact the uterus uh, or other gynecologic organs? Well, in fact, this has been looked at, and I've uh, given you the reference here below, but um, many of these patients may develop prolonged or abnormal intermenstrual bleeding due to fibroids, polyps, and sometimes infections, um, as well as hormonal disturbances. Uh, so not terribly different than uh, many other patients uh, in uh, the uh, uh, mid-reproductive uh, ages. Um, but there's also been noted to be higher rates of endometrial hyperplasia, potentially due to hormonal imbalance. Um, and immunosuppression, not surprisingly, may lead to an increased risk of other malignancies, probably most uh, frequently seen uh, cervical uh, uh, malignancies uh, and some other gynecologic uh, malignancies as well. Well, uh, on resection, our patient uh, was found to have a large uh, uterine corpus mass um, and here we see that it's uh, got increased cellularity. It's got a nice sharp border with the surrounding uh, myometrium. Uh, and we can see there's variable areas of uh, low cellularity and so forth, as well as some higher cellularity areas. Um, and as we look around, we note that there's also a number of kind of gaping vessels uh, around uh, some of these areas. Um, and uh, as we look here additionally, we see some degree of sort of uh, streaming and maybe um, almost a varicay body like uh, appearance or uh, some degree of uh, um, maybe neural differentiation, as well as here we're beginning to see um, some degree of nuclear atypia, some enlarged cells, uh, nuclei here jumping out at us. Um, and as we come in onto these, we see that these are, um, you know, somewhat atypical cells, uh, maybe multinucleate cells. Uh, many of them have uh, prominent nucleoli. Um, and we also begin to notice these the eosinophilic bodies uh, with, uh, within some of the cells. Uh, fairly fibr fibrillar. Um, and uh, if any of you have jumped to the diagnosis at this point, my hat is off to you. Uh, if you have recognized uh, this disorder. But increased cellularity, cytologic atypia, uh, that certainly begins to raise a, a differential uh, consideration of uh, smooth muscle tumors that may have uh, nuclear atypia. Well, certainly leiomyosarcoma is amongst those, and we would do well to uh, examine this uh, lesion sufficiently that we can exclude other features of uh, malignancy, such as necrosis, uh, and increased mitotic activity. Uh, there also is this entity known as lyomyoma with bizarre nuclei, previously known as symplastic uh, lyomyoma. Uh, and uh, more recently, we've begun to recognize the fumarate hydratase, the deficient smooth muscle tumors, as also being uh, possible uh, uh, considerations in this uh, group of tumors with uh, nuclear atypia. So we'll look at some more slides from here and see if, uh, again, we can re recapitulate these findings. Again, low magnification view here, uh, several ectatic, almost staghorn type vessels, um, and uh, focal areas of uh, nuclear atypia here. <clears throat> and uh, the atypia is uh, 
characterized by uh, variable multinucleation, uh, as well as uh, uh, pleomorphism of these uh, nuclei. Um, again, we note these uh, dense eosinophilic uh, droplets or uh, uh, almost rhabdoid-like bodies uh, in some of the uh, uh, cytoplasmic spaces. Um, and we can also see in some areas here, uh, there is some uh, nuclear atypia. We see rare pseudo-inclusions. Uh, and here's a nice example of this uh, very nice cherry red nucleus with a surrounding halo. Um, and these are the features uh, that have been described and attributed to uh, the fumarate hydratase deficient uh, tumors um, as a histologic hallmarks. So uh, here's another slide, which you can come back and see uh, again, some of these features. This one doesn't have quite the same uh, cytologic atypia, but it does have some areas that look a little bit uh, sort of neurilemmal-like. Uh, in some areas, you see these sort of streaming and uh, hypocellular or less cellular areas um, that have been uh, described as uh, giving it a, a somewhat of a degree of uh, appearance like that. These uh, ectatic uh, staghorn thin-walled vessels are also uh, a classic feature uh, in these tumors um, and something that you can often detect from low magnification. Uh, triggering maybe the need to look at higher magnification. So fumarate hydrate, hydratase deficiency comes in two varieties. First of all, there is a germline mutation, uh, and this is uh, very significantly associated with hereditary renal cell carcinoma syndrome. Uh, these patients will tend to have lyomyomatosis, uh, including uh, lyomyomas of the skin pilar erecti muscle, um, and also tend to occur at younger age groups. Uh, all of these together have been uh, occasionally uh, grouped under this, the syndrome of uh, Reed syndrome. There also is a, a, a scenario where uh, both alleles can be inactivated uh, without a germline mutation. Um, and these have also been described with associated renal cell carcinomas um, and uh, have seen, been seen in these uh, lyomyomas with bizarre nu nuclei, as well as some normal lyomyomata. Uh, as we've indicated, the characteristic histology includes these uh, eosinophilic macronucleoli with perinucleolar halos, fairly high cellularity, the ectatic staghorn vessels, neurilemmal-like growth, uh, very eosinophilic cytoplasmic uh, globules. And immunohistochemistry can be helpful if you need it. Uh, these uh, are, uh, or if it's available, these tumors are negative for fumarate hydratase. Um, and they're positive for two uh, uh, sexino 2SC. I just, that's the abbreviation. I can't remember the name right off the top of my head. Uh, but both of these are uh, uh, evidence of this uh, Krebs cycle uh, uh, dysfunction. Uh, this one accumulating and this one being not present. Uh, you can also, of course, do mutational analysis if need be um, uh, to make the diagnosis. And that may be useful if you're looking at a potential germline situation and want to uh, assess other family members. Now, I mentioned the uh, other differential in this uh, disorder was uh, lyomyoma with uh, bizarre nuclei. Um, and so here's a curatage specimen from a patient who's also fairly young um, and uh, I believe shows us uh, some fairly good features for uh, lyomyoma with bizarre nuclei. Uh, we have several fragments of uh, myometrium, but uh, only a couple of them show the characteristic uh, nuclear uh, pleomorphism and atypia, uh, which you can see here. And it's a little bit different uh, because we have both macronuclei as well as multinucleated cells. Um, we don't see the other features that we were seeing in that other uh, in fumarate hydratase uh, deficient cases, we don't see the prominent nucleoli. Well, there's a few here. Um, and we certainly don't see the uh, eosinophilic droplets to the same extent uh, that we might uh, expect uh, with the fumarate hydratase uh, deficient tumors. Uh, that said, uh, if uh, this is a su suspect lesion, uh, you might uh, consider doing those additional uh, stains to uh, satisfy yourself that you're dealing with. 
to satisfy yourself that you're not dealing with a, a more serious disorder. Um, as I said, there were two fragments in here and you can come back and see the other fragment, which I believe is right here. Um, and I think you can begin to see some of the atypical nuclei coming into bear here. Now of significance here, in and of themselves, uh, either one of these uh, types of lyomyoma have a, a benign course. Um, the older series, I think, merge these two together. Um, and so the uh, earlier series, which were 50, 60, 80 cases at times, uh, have shown a uniformly benign course. Um, so these early series, of course, included some of these fumarate hydratase deficient smooth muscle tumors um, because uh, there were overlapping features. And in one study, in fact, of uh, uh, such cases, they found that about a half of them showed uh, fumarate hydratase aberrations uh, via immunohistochemistry. So uh, no, uh, no foul if you uh, miss this diagnosis, unless, unless of course, uh, the patient uh, is going to potentially develop uh, renal cell carcinoma and has one of those um, uh, germline mutations that's going to affect other family members as well. Uh, and that's the situation which you certainly want to avoid. So our final find-out diagnosis on today's case is fumarate hydratase deficient smooth muscle tumor arising in the uterus. Um, we don't have specific data as to whether this was sporadic or a uh, uh, germline mutation, uh, but uh, further evaluation and the family may be worthwhile at this point. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, hope that's brought things into focus for you a little bit on this uh, uh, differential of smooth muscle tumors in the uterus that have uh, significant uh, nuclear atypia. Uh, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and uh, that way you'll catch future releases uh, as we uh, put them to our channel. And we always welcome uh, likes and uh, comments. Uh, we enjoy interacting with uh, you as our viewers and appreciate uh, you taking a little bit of time with us. So until next time, uh, thanks for joining us.